Toxic Rain Trickster is probably among the best known and the most popular builds of Path of Exile that are perfectly suited to be League starters, such as Ultimatum League starters and the ones going forward. I'm sure Toxic Rain Trickster is gonna hold its throne, its position to be one of those builds that you, my friends, need to know about. As beginners of Path of Exile, as always, that's what my channel is catering for, mostly. So I am very, very excited to share my version, my take on the Toxic Rain Trickster build with you today. Please stick around, let's talk about it! Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am your host Gyro, we are having another beginner-friendly build guide for Path of Exile 314 Ultimatum League, Toxic Shadow Trickster. Uh, as a very quick disclaimer, if you're new here, first of all, particularly warm welcome to you. And TLDR, my friends, my videos are made for absolute beginners and returning players of Path of Exile, not for experts or those who intend to push and learn high end game straight away. If you want to learn more, please click on the I button in the top right corner of the video and watch a slightly lengthier and more detailed intro and disclaimer. Now let's talk about the build itself. Toxic Rain Shadow Trickster is a very very simple build revolving around one single ability, Toxic Rain. As always it is boosted by a bunch of support gems that can vary slightly depending on the stage of the game you're at and the needs of your particular character. Toxic Rain shoots a volley of arrows into the air that then land and spawn green toxic pods everywhere that burst open after a very short delay, slowing down enemies in their area and applying massive chaos damage over time effect on everything nearby. We will rely on Mirage Archer support gem to have an imaginary friend with us, just like we did with the Rain of Arrows Ranger build as extra volleys of toxic pods are always very welcome. The rest of the setup will take a closer look at the main gems and skills section which is coming up very very shortly. Couple of words about leveling, I recommend starting to use toxic rain as soon as you get your hands on it, obviously, but it won't happen until level 12 if I'm not mistaken. Up to that point just level with the caustic arrow skill that you will get at level 1 and if not as a quest reward, then at least you can buy it anytime from Nessa, the vendor in the first town. I personally supported Caustic Arrow straight away with the Split Arrow support, which um, added extra arrows to each of my shots and everything was dying so fast that leveling was honestly a breeze. Now let's talk about main gems and skills. So your choices here may vary slightly, but we will start obviously with the Toxic Rain main kind of group of the gems. And this worked, uh, worked very well for me up to the start of the end game, so sort of in the ballpark of level 70. And when I started mapping through the first tier of Atlas maps. So I am relying on faster attack support, which does exactly what it says. Void Manipulation Support, which does more damage over time. Inspiration Support, which I would say is optional for this build, but super duper helpful if you're having any issues with mana. And let's say Clarity Aura doesn't help you all that much. I've used it in early-ish leveling, by the way, and then gave up on it as soon as I got Inspiration Support and Mana Regen from the passives that come with our Ascendancy skill choices that we'll talk about very very soon in the Ascendancy section of this video. Mirage Archer support is in my opinion non-negotiable and mandatory for this build. And uh, finally, Vicious Projectile support is boosting Chaos damage over time quite massively further. If you don't have Tabula Rasa or any other 6 socket rope during your leveling journey or early endgame, and have to work with fewer sockets, I'd say that an obvious optional skill here, as already mentioned, is Inspiration Support. With the next one, if you had to drop one more and only had four sockets to play with, 
I would say you can drop faster attack support, but do not drop anything that reduces, uh, that would reduce effectively your damage over time, chaos damage over time. For mobility, I've used dash, very simply, and for the most basic death prevention, I've used another very basic pair of gems, relying on cast when damage taken support, which I kept at level 1, this is important. And I, by the way, messed up at one point and I leveled it to level 2, which was still okay, but I recommend that you keep it at level 1, so that the threshold, the damage threshold received before the support triggers another skill, is kept as low as possible. And this support gem was invoking, unsurprisingly, the Immortal Call, which reduces damage received by roughly a quarter. And in tough spots it is quite fantastic and saved me more times than I can count. For slightly higher levels of the game and early mapping to prevent further deaths, I'm relying on my good old friend Decoy Totem, which in this particular basic build isn't properly supported by anything you might choose to do, by the way, like increasing the area of effect of the totem or putting it into a gem cluster with multiple totem support, so that each button press would spawn two totems instead, if it makes you feel any safer out there, which it probably will. Everything else that you can see socketed into my gear right now, it just shows you how casual I am about approaching, leveling my characters for fun, and everything that's in my bow right now, for example, all those four gems have nothing to do with the core gameplay of this build, and it's just me, believe it or not, leveling other gems for other builds that I'm potentially interested in and that I'll be reporting to you soon on this channel. So you could treat it as a tip. If you know that you, you too would be diversifying into other ranger or shadow builds in the closest future, you could carry a gem basically just to level it up. I know it's obvious, but maybe, maybe a lot of you are not really using that simple basic technique, but please feel free to do that. Now let's very briefly mention the gear. As far as the gear is concerned, I already mentioned Tabula Rasa, 6 socket simple robe. It helps massively alt characters at the start, you can boost your main ability, whatever it is in whichever build you play, by quite a lot with every imaginable support gem, and I did that. But no other pieces of gear are really mandatory, and Tabula Rasa is also not mandatory. Like I already said to you, the core, the main kind of set of gems can work very nicely even with four sockets. And four sockets are really your poor man's choice, poor lady's choice, because uh, those pieces of gear are available through the campaign, they drop left and right, there shouldn't be a problem for you to pick one up. Now passive skill tree. My Passive skill tree shows you yet another build in progress, at the stage, like I already said, of me only just entering the early end game and lowest tier of Atlas mapping. As always, link to this build and its full projected variant for higher levels is in the description of this video. The link will take you to path of building POB tool that will allow you to take your time, zoom in, zoom out, browse around and copy the build properly. As I always keep reminding my viewers, all of my builds only show key skills and gems, pieces of gear if applicable and where applicable, to make this build work for the beginners of Path of Exile. And I never ever bother outlining every little minute detail, because those are usually of no interest or value for absolute beginners of the game and they will only overwhelm beginners further, which I don't want to do on my channel. Now let's talk about Ascendancy. For Ascendancy we will go with Trickster, and first we'll go towards Patient Reaper, big node here, which offers us the biggest bang for our buck, I think, for only a couple of very first points of investment. And then we will turn left towards Prolonged Pain, which will further increase our damage over time, that this build is kinda all about. When I complete higher levels of Ascendancy Labyrinth, I personally intend to go towards Ghost Dance and Escape Artist to, book, to boost my survivability further, because I already kind of feel quite pushed in, in, you know, tough spots. But if you think that you will realistically not do the Labyrinth for the fourth time, let's say, 
which is where the difficulty will ramp up quite substantially and what requires already quite a lot of time investment as well to even get to that point. Well, you might choose then to go towards Weave the Arcane node to instead boost your mana capacity and increase your damage output quite massively because you will be able to then remove inspiration support. You will be able to then, you know, rely on your mana using these passives and it increases the speed of attack. So that's great as well. Now let's wrap up this little video with talking about pros and cons because every build has them. Main pro of this build is just how easy it is to get to the point of feeling very powerful without being particularly skilled or having any optimized gear. I know I do say that quite often about my other builds, but you know, hello and welcome to the channel if you're new here, because these are my build, that's what my builds are all about. I try to choose those kind of builds to talk to you about. But anyway, this one, is kind of very special as pressing literally one button and inflicting literally massive amounts of damage that most mobs have the least amounts of resistance against and doing it all from range feels very very overpowered I'll be honest with you. The main con of this build is the same as with all ranged and relatively squishy classes. Smaller boss arenas can get quite hectic even though this trickster, for example, is a lot more tanky, or should I say evade or dodgy than my Reign of Arrows Ranger build has been, if you have been watching that video and maybe are comparing a little bit here. Uh, I've killed bosses and survived fights on this trickster. Such fights and such intense uh, boss kind of arena experiences that my Ranger needed good embarrassing 5 to 10 minutes of constant dying to get to the end, in all honesty. So it is a con, you can feel as a ranged character, you can feel a bit pressed against the walls and having to dash and having to run and charge all the time and not really take direct hits too often, relying on your avoidance, you know, and evasion rating, um, kind of playing with death there all every step of the way. But I'd say that still this character feels really, really, really tanky. I really, really, really enjoy it. And I hope you will as well. And this is where I'll wrap up this video, my friends. I really hope you enjoyed, you enjoyed it. If you did, the best way for you to let me know that you did enjoy it is to hit that like button. Don't be shy because I do pay attention to those uh, metrics and I do appreciate any words of support in the comments. I do like to hear from you, my friends and talk to you about what I've done right, what you think I've done wrong in these builds, how you play particular similar builds. We all learn from each other and this channel is here to welcome beginners of Path of Exile and have fun in the process. If this is your cup of tea, you're always welcome here, so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll be speaking with you once again in a few days time about some other Path, Path of Exile build or some tips and tricks that are long overdue, I believe. So yes, we'll be speaking again soon. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.